fat fingered, fat thumbed it. Those <laughs> are nerd terms where, <laughs> you know, when we make a mistake on the keyboard, <laughs> <laughs> my finger hit the wrong key. Yeah. I, Which I is usually it. the inner key. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to send that yet. <laughs> yeah. You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to episode 323 of the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs, and joining me is Donna Grindle of Carden. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Donna. Uh, yes. So, okay. lots of craziness this week. Yes. You know, everywhere. Not just in our, the, the things we're going to talk about today. Just things just going crazy. Yep. So. Yeah, well, for both of us. Yeah. But, um, you know, things will settle down and, and then they'll go crazy again. That's just a, the cycle of life. <laughs> 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 Suddenly. Oh, boy. We're we're singing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have my grandson. I'm just gonna get on top of the mountain, hold him out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That is. I, I'm looking forward to it when you become a grandfather because it's, it's gonna be fun for I know. me it's, and others around you. It's quick, quickly approaching. Yeah, so, TikTok. Uh, I don't know. So today we got some uh, some ransomware stories. No, we've never talked about ransomware. I know, but uh, yeah, there's some interesting stuff going down out there. So yeah, there's some some changes are happening, and uh, we talked about this a lot. Where you want to pay attention to what's going on because you want to understand how it may affect you. We talk about information sharing, analysis, all that good stuff. So this is what we're bringing today because we're going to be talking about a few stories of things that you need to be aware of because some things you thought were no longer are there again. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some new tactics that some ransomware gangs are throwing out there that you're not going to like. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see how that goes too. There's yeah. a lot, David. There's a lot. There, There is a lot. There is a lot. But see. as we closed out last week, as soon as we stopped recording. Yes. HHS decided to throw something out there. <laughs> yeah, they were trying to get it in in time for us to record about it. They just missed it. They we just didn't missed coordinate it. this time. So, um, in this week's HIPAA Say what? segment, we're <laughs> talking about it. Number 20. Oh. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so almost OCR. enough of them that they could buy their uh, drink legally. <laughs> <laughs> um, they yeah, they, but, I mean, they're still behind on the enforcement initiative, you know, for the, the right of access. But, you know, 20. You have 20. Mm -hmm. That's more than they usually do in a whole year, much less on an individual specific type of vi violation. That's just never been done. So it's clear that they are not turning away from this. And, and we've heard this from the, you know, our OCR contacts who've told us, oh, that's still happening. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. They're yeah. still behind it. <laughs> they're pushing. Yeah, but there, <laughs> even if it wasn't, there's no reason not to make sure you're doing the right thing. I mean, because this is about patient care. Mm -hmm. So yet another time. What had happened was, is the answer. Yeah. So this one is Children's Hospital and Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, the, you know, eh, they, they are resolving uh, a case for, you know, not providing children's records to their parents without OCR having to get involved, which is not what should happen. They're paying 80 grand and going on a corrective action plan. And we always tell you it's the corrective action plan that you should be worried about. Mm -hmm. But, as always, as is our custom 
we evaluate the resolution agreement. Yes, there was not anything I saw groundbreaking as far as these cases go. But we also look at what point they're trying to get across with their press release, official quote from the director, which is David's favorite thing to do. Hit it, <laughs> David. Uh, yeah, so the acting OCR director, Robin Sue. We still don't know how to say your last name yet, Robin <laughs> Sue. So if you're listening, just shoot us a message, maybe with an audio recording of how to say it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've, so we've, we've done searches. We've done everything. We yeah, we're trying do. to find videos where she says her name, something. But I don't I don't know if it's for, for Boise or for Boosie or for boys. For bows. We don't for, know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, complicated name. Sorry. You know, I've lived with Sims all my life. It's pretty easy. <laughs> but anyway, so she, she says, generally, HIPAA requires covered entities to give Parents timely access to their minor children's medical records when the parent is the child's personal representative. OCR's right of access initiative supports patients and personal representatives' fundamental right to have their health information and underscores the importance of all covered entities' compliance with this essential right. Oh, bam. Yeah. Oh, bam. Yeah, and that when you're dealing with children, pediatrics, you want to talk about a nightmare? Mm -hmm. it, it's it's insane on who has rights to the records, who can bring them to the doctor, who can okay procedures, who can, you know, you sometimes have the parents are divorced and then they remarry somebody else and then they want to, you know, they divorce them. So I've got multiple step parents, multiple. It is not easy. Mm-mm. Which is why they say when the parent is the child's personal representative. Because there are so many times that people who aren't supposed to have access to the records try to get them and they want to make sure that they're pointing out. We're not saying just willy nilly give them away <laughs> so that you're doing it in a timely manner. It should be the proper uh, release of records and a complete Record. And I think a lot of people, this is not, they're not noticing that this enforcement initiative covers the timely, like within 30 days, but within 30 days, it should be all the records. That's where a lot of people are getting messed up. Well, we gave it to them within 30 days. Yes, but you were missing three lab reports. We need mm. those. We know you did them. We know, we see that you did them. Where are they? So that that uh, complete records within a timely manner is a big deal. So. Yep. So not going away. Mm -mm. So um, we've we've talked about this for a long time, but and we've covered get your house in order. Multiple episodes about it. So yes, get your house in order. Yep. Get your ducks quacking the right way. Uh -huh. So we we talked a few weeks ago about. The Revil Gang, or R Evil, depending on how you want to pronounce them. <laughs> Nobody Revel, knows how to pronounce Revel. anything. Everybody's going to have <laughs> their own thing. and Yeah, the Revil Knievel Gang. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about them a few weeks ago and how they kind of just disappeared. Yeah, Oof. during the whole Kaseya thing, they were just like, we're tough, we're here, and then, poof, they just gone. Yeah, so we didn't know if maybe they got... You know, they got a big payoff because we. I don't know of anything about that yet. Do you have you heard anything about? Did they get paid for that? <laughs> for the Kaseya thing? Yeah. What we do know, and this was a big thing, and uh, that Kaseya ended up with the decryption keys that are specific to their incident. Mm -hmm. And all they say is they got them from a third party. <laughs> That's it. Uh, but the gang claims that one of their team fat fingered the key, which sent it out to people. And so, you know, that's how they ended up with it. Kaseya's not saying. Kaseya's not going to hmm. say what they want him to say. The gang is making that claim. Who knows? Oh, and uh, I did make a note for a quick fat fingered. Fat thumbed it. 
those are nerd terms where, <laughs> you know, when we make a mistake on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> My finger hit the wrong key. Yeah. I, which I is usually it. the inner key. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to send that yet. <laughs> yeah. I fat thumbed it. That, that, or fat fingered it means, you know, I hit some keys that I wasn't supposed to. And when you think about, particularly when we're in those PowerShells and the scripts and stuff and just entering commands, that's when things go awry. Yeah. Boom. The, the rapid oh. fire. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't ready. Well, it's oh. like when you, you're doing like messaging and you're, you know, you're halfway through the sentence and you hit the enter thinking it's going to go to another line, but it sends the message. Yeah. So you get, you know, half a word in there and you're like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> or you go to fix one word and then you hit enter accidentally or, you know, or like yeah, me, kind of I drag my hand across the little trackpad on the laptop and then script the, uh, uh, all of those things. Fat <laughs> fingered, fat thumbed it. I've made a mistake on the keyboard. So they're claiming one of the gang members made a mistake because say is saying, we're not saying, we're just saying we got it. Yep. But all that to say, they're back. They're back. Or should I say, a, yeah, they're back. <laughs> yes, we have titles and we're, we're going to have fun with that. But yeah, you know, it, it, uh, they can claim whatever they want about why they were gone. And there's a lot of debate about that. But. You know, it's like they packed up, moved to another house, <laughs> mm -hmm. set up shop again is basically what it is. And, you know, we knew that, that they have a business continuity plan. We talked <laughs> maybe about our that. Buddy, maybe our buddy uh, Jack Recider will figure it all out. And, <laughs> <laughs> nah. and we'll hear it on the show. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Get on that, Jack. Could you do that? <laughs> um, cover that on Dark Knight Diaries, please. A little plug to Dark Knight Diaries. But... The big picture issue here is no matter what it is, they say that they, for whatever reason, had to restore from backup. So they completely restored from backup. They've apparently done some retooling and they're back in the game threatening to release information that has, has been stolen right back where they were. Mm -hmm. So that being said, just like always, there are new gangs that are popping up. There are plenty of these. There's the Conti gang and the Gand Crab that, you know, they go, they come, they go. They, go. they mostly reinvent themselves in a lot of ways. In fact, the Reevil, Revel group, they also, you know, they distribute Sedina Kibi. And, uh, you know, there's always going to be plenty. It's not like when one big one goes away, there's now... So everybody take a sigh of relief. <laughs> if one less to worry about. No. Yeah. No. It creates a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> that in there, which is the story that starts that leads us into the other two stories. So number two, I'm a fan of Sun Tzu, the Chinese general, very strategic, has some great stuff, but one of the phrases is, know thy enemy and know thyself. So that's story number two, is we are learning about their tactics. So, and I don't know which ones, we got them all here, multiple different stories. We've got... One of the scripts was found that shows the automation of the script, so showing the files that they are after, the specific ones. You know, we know, for example, so many things, but to actually get a copy of one of the scripts, which apparently, you know, we're getting a lot of these articles from Bleeping Computer, which, first of all, I love the name. <laughs> <laughs> And I've followed them for years when it was just, you know, a help site uh, more than yeah. anything. <laughs> and uh, now they do a lot of really great reporting on cybersecurity. But having the actual script that shows the automation, I'm um, looking for the total number. 123 keywords they look for that they scan uh, data looking to see if they can find these. And it's everything from, 
uh, checking, concealed, government, routing, W4, W2, W9. That's why I don't like SSN, SSA, SS number. Some other ones in here. Uh, investigation. <laughs> there you go. Probably confidential. <laughs> yeah. Insurance. You know, we've we've heard him talk about you know, Gary's uh, team at Black Talent has talked about how they're trying to negotiate and say this is too much money to pay. These people don't have the money, and they hold up <laughs> a copy of what the <laughs> insurance policies is. Don't tell me that this is your insurance. This is why we're asking. <laughs> So they're they're after a lot of these things, password, but it's 123 things. They scan all your systems looking for these words. Mm -hmm. And uh, the training, this is from training material, teaching the affiliates how to use. This is your training class on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) And it tells them, do an immediate search for this list of data. Uh, when you gain control of a Windows domain controller. And, I mean, it's like, bam. Let's see. What do you think is the most, well, you can see what they're after based on what you see there. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have a link in the in the show notes, but take a look at that. But, it, I mean, you're certainly not going to change all the terminology. <laughs> no, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, here's the 123 words we can't use in our business. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. (laughs) But you need to be aware that's what they're going to do right away. Mm -hmm. So you need to protect it. And then another article discusses what the gangs consider a perfect victim. Mm -hmm. At least they know who their target market is. (laughs) Because they do call them customers, don't they? (laughs) They do. (laughs) And, and we've talked before about how, you know, this has now become like a business that this group only focuses on getting email addresses and then they sell them. This group mm-hmm. focuses on initial access. And uh, so that's their big business. And uh, let's see, Black Matter and Lockbit gangs may cut out some of the legwork by purchasing access, including working credentials or the knowledge of a vulnerability that is in a corporate system. Yeah. So I can just have the access, not do anything with it. I just have the access where I know the vulnerability and I can just sell that. Yeah. So they're showing how that that's what they're doing now. Then they do mention that some of them, you know, they're honest criminals. Of course they are. And, uh, most of folk. Yeah. (laughs) So they, they will, some of them, turn down. I think they there's somewhere I read 50% of them will turn down certain sectors, particularly healthcare, education, some of them governments, nonprofits, whatever. But that's only 50%. <laughs> so if yeah, they don't um, buy. <laughs> this, uh, is your, this is your glass, glass half empty, half full debate. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can either say, wow, this is great. Only 50% will attack us. Or you can say, this is terrible because at least 50% will attack us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So don't don't feel good that you're only going to get 50%. And I did find it interesting that the top access they're trying to buy and and uh, this uh, RDP. Well, the, the, the way I see it is if you got 50, 50% of the attackers will attack. Mm-hmm. And fifty percent of the victims aren't doing anything. That's a hundred percent chance something's going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go, twisting somebody's brain around right in the middle of it. I guess. But anyway, <laughs> your VPN. <laughs> yeah. They, well, they list the most wanted types of access that they're wanting to buy. RDP. Yeah. If you're exposing RDP in any way. It has to be 2FA. It you just it and really you shouldn't even you should find another way. But the yeah. good news is, you know, the other way is VPN, which is the other thing they're trying to buy. <laughs> <laughs> is VPN. 
And then how many times do you hear people tell us, well, we have Citrix, we have VMware, we have, so we don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. You've heard it way too many times. Well, guess what? They're looking for <laughs> Citrix, Palo Alto, VMware, Fortinet, and Cisco. Just yep. so you know. That's why I use Netgear. <laughs> that, that is a joke, folks. Yes, yeah, it is. <laughs> don't, don't run out by Netgear. <laughs> no, that's not what he's saying. I mean, there was yeah, a big no. Fortinet thing when it, that came out just last week. That, you know, mm -hmm. some major stuff. So the joke behind that comment is there's a, a prospect that I've been talking to, and and I I think they fall under HIPAA. We still haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> um, I can't get them to uh, stay on the stay on track long enough to figure this out. But, the, you know, they've got something they picked up at Walmart, you know, protecting this organization that, you know, they've got a server and, you know, all this other stuff, but they go and buy, you know, home hardware. Actually, yeah. I think they have a, a gaming router, <laughs> but still it's like. It's high speed. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, buy a purpose built equipment. Yeah, and your purpose is not to game. It's the purpose is to run a business. You need mm -hmm. protection. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, you don't you don't see the military jumping in a whole bunch of cool sports cars to go into battle. We're fast, <laughs> and, fast. We're <laughs> and we're furious, and we're furious. Yeah. All right, but. There are some things that have come out and I have tried to get it worked into some of our discussions and have not been able to. And it's been almost a year. Well, it is a year since the CISA MS ISAC ransomware guide came out. It is very good information. So there'll be a link to that. I haven't really been able to talk about it that much, but, you know, it it's helpful. But as you... Uh, or looking for information to help educate and learn things. And we're supposed to know ourselves and know our enemy. We're telling you that so that we can tell you about this other thing. Cause I can't tell you about the other thing without telling you that we have that. <laughs> and that's uh, I told you that story. So I could tell you this story <laughs> for those of you who are Ron white fans. You'll understand. They call me. Tater salad. Anyway, the <laughs> <laughs> this past uh, week, CISA did also send out an article about some new guides and uh, ransomware tools or education that New Zealand government, they have a CERT group, and they sent out some stuff, and I loved the charts in there. They are so cool. Mm -hmm. because you like you just like the fact that it looks like a a diagram <laughs> well you know i'm a nerd but <laughs> it's a flow chart oh my gosh I can't oh my God. It. somebody flow charted around somewhere <laughs> <laughs> she so probably bad. framed it and hung it up in the bathroom <laughs> yeah I've, I've had to study it two or three times i get really excited about it i, I can't help myself I, <laughs> look at the arrows look at them look at them <laughs> It's got circles and colors and everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they have it so that it helps you explain the initial, you know, how it works. It's, it's showing you how ransomware works. And it's got a section that says, okay, there's going to be this initial access. And then they consolidate and you know stage and then you have the impact of the target and the money at the end and it it lets people see there's a bunch of ways in and then once they get in they don't just go straight to the target they do some work in the middle mm -hmm. and then it goes a step further and adds in here are all the little things how you could stop them so then it takes that picture and says, look at all the places you could prevent things from happening before it does. And it adds more color. Yeah, more colors. <laughs> and then I got really excited. But this is something that you can use to teach with and plan and, and you know, help when I'm when I'm working with business owners 
you know, boards, executives, and trying to say, right here, this pink, purple, blue dots here that stop that flow, that's what we want. <laughs> that's <laughs> what we're asking for. And uh, it, it, it's a whole lot easier to have visual representation of what you're trying to do. So I see it as a great piece to use to be able to explain. We have to understand us. Where are our weaknesses? And what are our options for protecting us in these ransomware attacks? So I got real excited about it. I can't help myself. Okay. So there's those. <laughs> and then getting, getting back to understanding your enemy. They actually had a, apparently an interview with a representative of Lockbit ransomware. <laughs> and uh, this article takes you through a bunch of stuff and includes nine takeaways. But in that article, there were some specific, you know, there's some things not surprised, but there were three specific things that I wanted to make sure we point out that we talk about, and we love it when people point out that we were. Well, David especially loves to be told he's right. <laughs> uh, so, but I don't know about you, but I picked my three and put them in the notes. Do you? Did you disagree with my choices? Or are you good? No, with I, my concur. I concur. I <laughs> concur. Okay, expect more yeah. supply chain attacks. There's your, um, there's your another shout out in a movie. Yeah, <laughs> I concur. Catch me if you can. You, mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. you just kept going. I, I concur. I concur. I concur. <laughs> I concur. Was that when he was? He was the doctor, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He didn't know what they were asking him. <laughs> he just, I concur. I concur. He carried it well. But anyway, expect more supply chain attacks. Let me count the ways that we've talked about that. We're about to talk mm -hmm. about it more, aren't we? About the importance of supply chain management. Yeah, I mean, supply chain, even without the attacks, I mean, it's, it's in shambles. Like, can you say chip manufacturing? <laughs> I, had a client, I had a client yesterday. They were like, I need a laptop before next Wednesday. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, like a new one? No. <laughs> yeah, like no. like a, a real laptop? <laughs> I'm I can like, see uh, if I can grab us a very high-priced used clunker on eBay. Mm -hmm. I said, we will get you a stopgap laptop. <laughs> That's all I can offer you. Yeah. It's like, yeah you, apparently, you haven't looked at how far... Backed up laptops are right now. I mean, depending on what you want, you're going to be waiting till the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, our total supply chain is whacked, and <laughs> and just I went through an article just talking about how whacked the supply chain is itself in moving products mm -hmm. from point A to point B around the world. There's layers upon layers upon layers of problems. You know, even if we could get it shipped here, then you got to get it off the boat and then from a container to it. We got trucking issues and and trains and it, planes, trains bus and automobiles. They're all too, they're all complicated. We can't get our stuff. Bus drivers. I mean, yeah. What one state they're bringing in the National Guard to drive buses because they can't. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's like the supply chain of people is even disrupted. Like we can't yeah. get enough people. <laughs> to do yeah. Things. You can't get people. And, and, and that's a big problem is they don't have enough people driving trucks. Mm -mm. So if your disaster recovery plan or your plan, if you get hit with ransomware is to get a bunch of new equipment. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. So there's that. That you got to worry about. But then there's mm -hmm. also the attacks like on Kaseya and the MSPs and uh, the software providers. You know, they, they want to be able to load code that's malicious using your vendors. Mm -hmm. 
And they're they're constantly exploring those opportunities for growth. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately they are. And uh, we'll, we'll skip. We'll get to the the next. The second one on the list is perfect segue to the next topic. But attacks are now more automated. That scripts, the scripts that we just talked about, they truly mm-hmm. are. They're getting in there and then just running these scripts that go and search for things and find things and and then. Here's what happens is they load the scripts, they run the scripts, and then they delete all information about what they ran. So you'll see that it ran, but you won't know what they did. Mm -hmm. And you have to dig to actually know that it ran. I mean, they have to do, the forensics folks, I mean, now... (laughs) The ransomware folks, the criminals, are doing counter-forensics. You know, it's kind of like when now the criminals know that you we can use DNA that you touch something. So now they worry about all of those things. Well, that's what, you know, the forensics, the DNA of what their tools are and what they're doing while they're in there. They're cleaning up behind themselves. Mm-hmm. So there's that. And then the third one, which is a perfect segue into the next story, which is that one. When you told me that I hadn't seen that one, so I'm still a little stunned. A little shaken. A little shaken. Are you shaken or stirred? (laughs) (laughs) A little both. So uh, (laughs) criminals prefer public silence. Yeah. We don't want any attention. Yeah. We don't want you talking about what you're doing. Yeah. Which some targets would prefer public silence (laughs) (laughs) too. Don't worry. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, there's that. So, even when we're supposed to, <laughs> <laughs> not going to talk about that right now. Uh, <laughs> but when you said, "Hey, did you see this one?" and I'm like, "Well, you you kind of said when you didn't see this in here at this point, you knew I hadn't seen it." Yeah, and you know, I try to, I have to quell what I send you to say, did you see this? Because, you know, we're following a lot of the same stuff and we would just be badgering each other back and forth all day going, yes, I saw that. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wait until I don't hear you say it. And I'm like, she didn't see this. <laughs> 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 because had she seen it, she would have mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. So hit it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because now a ransomware gang, which um, is called the grief ransomware. Oh, good decide- grief. Yeah, good grief. They've decided that it's it's not in your best interest as a as a target to have somebody help you because these people that are doing um you know ransomware negotiations, they're they're not good for your business. They're they they do not care about you. <laughs> Nor are they good for ours, but we're going to leave that out right now. Yeah. And if you, if you call somebody that does negotiating, you know, I mean, they're going to, they're going to make the criminals reduce their, their ransom and all that. It's just, it's not good for anybody. No, no, they're taking advantage of you. We're not. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So to, uh, to help you make a decision to not call a ransomware (laughs) negotiator, we've decided that. If you call a ransomware negotiator or FBI or anybody like that, we're just going to delete the encryption key so that there is no chance, no matter how much money you have, that you'll ever get your data back. Yeah. So we are taking the scorched earth approach (laughs) should you try to contact law enforcement or a negotiating firm. So sounds kind of scary. (laughs) <laughs> it's like dog it <laughs> because what do we tell people you get attacked with ransomware, get law enforcement involved, call the insurance company, call the hostage negotiator. <laughs> and that's essentially what we're doing. I mean, they've kidnapped your stuff and, yeah. and now they're going to kill it. If you call the police. Right. Which, you know, it's, we laugh about it, but it's kind of the same stuff you see in the movies, right? Like, I've got your son, and if you call the law enforcement, I'm going to kill him. Uh, and yeah. then all of a sudden, you're like, well, what do you do? Right. Because, you know, and of course, in the movies, we got somebody that 
swoops in in a ninja suit. <laughs> da, 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 da. And, and they and they grab the, the person and they get out. So I don't I don't know. Can somebody get in and steal your data back <laughs> and get out? I don't. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, it doesn't quite work that way no. um, in, in the digital world. So, man, I don't know. I, like I don't know what the response should be because I, I think that it's somehow they're, they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot in a little way, in a few ways, because obviously if they're not getting any money, they're not going to stay around long, uh-huh. <laughs> but it, it only takes a few people to make examples out of. And then everybody else is like, okay, I won't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I don't yeah. know, man, uh, well, that's, you know, that that's the discussion in another article about this is, you know, the, that they may, make an example out of somebody and think, okay, it's worth tanking that. But we know they want money. Mm-hmm. And they don't get money if they hose it. Right? Mm-hmm. There's there's no reason to pay you. So right. they're going to negotiate. I say that you still call and you negotiator people out there, it's up to you to be prepared to deal with that so that <laughs> You know, you make sure that you're not, we're not the ones made an example out of. And um, I, I just yeah, want to know a, that you're prepared. Just say, I am not a negotiator. I am a coach. I, I, I am. I, <laughs> I, I, well, you know, that, that I am a breach coach. That's what I am. And uh, <laughs> I do that job. Uh, but there, it is not some negotiation thing that I want to be participating in. So, no. <laughs> I'm a ransom coach. Yeah. You know, you just hope it's not somebody you've already negotiated with. And they're like, Bob, we know. <laughs> You're like, shh, be quiet. <laughs> so, you know, we know it's you. I told you. <laughs> uh, so, but needless to say, there's a lot going on and we need to understand not only what our preparations are, but how their tactics continue to change. Yeah. The, you know, all this though, it really goes back to the conversation of, for, for me anyway, I don't want to spend a lot of time having a conversation about hire a negotiator, not hire a negotiator. What, I mean, not, that needs to be part of the conversation, but I want to spend most of my time on how do I prevent getting to this point? Mm-hmm. I think people spend time sometimes too late, they spend time trying to figure out how to respond to it once it happens. And they spend no time trying to prevent it from happening. That's right. So So, we we protect, detect, then respond. Yeah. You want to call in the professionals though, for that part, you just need to know who to call and then worry about everything else that you got to do. Yep. But certainly you know, spend spend time on all of them, but you mm-hmm. know, put put a lot of effort into prevention first. Yes. That's going to save you more than anything. Well, so, and that's about knowing yourself, knowing their tactics, and making the right investments. Mm-hmm. That's it. So yep. you do. Oh wait, that would be a risk analysis and a risk management plan. <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> <laughs> Nod to you, Krista. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Ah, So that brings us to our third story of three stories to consider about ransomware. Mm -hmm. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah. Now this one, uh, and that's what Spaceballs, definitely Tommy Boy, that's, you know, there's a whole scene in Tommy Boy that, Involves a deer. Anyway, that's going to leave a mark is the story we're going into here is an Arizona Queen Creek Medical Center, a.k.a. Desert Wells Family Medicine, has made an announcement. And just reading the letter, that you know how painful conveying this message is. And, and mm-hmm. you can see that in their letter, which is why I say that's going to leave a mark because it will forever impact their business. Oh, yeah. So they were hit by ransomware 
and they thought, well, we can restore. Nope, nope. Their backups did not anticipate that the ransomware attackers would also encrypt the backups. So this is that's a big thing that you need to understand and evaluate in your backup strategy. David is the uh, king of our backup and recovery strategy conversations in the boot camp. And, My uh, rants about it. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, the, to me, one of the most uh, important things that you share about that is you're not buying backup. You're buying restore. Yeah. And I have to know that I will be able to restore. Yeah. Again, this goes back to the, the, the conversation is how much time are you putting into ensuring <laughs> that you're preventing this from happening? And yeah. people drop the ball more times. I mean, I don't know what the percentage is. It's in the high 90s. How many mm-hmm. times people are doing backups? And, and when I say, when's the last time you tested recovery? What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. How long will it take you to do a restore? You know? Yeah. It, so any I, of those I, things. I mean, at best, I've had somebody say, well, we actually recovered a file last week. Okay, great. That's At least you tested a, a file. Have you tested, mm-hmm. like, full systems? Do you know yeah. what that's going to take? Any Anything. And, yeah. I mean, I rarely, rarely get anybody who's like, oh, yeah, we absolutely test our backups. Well, even if you can say, look, we tried to do a restore, multiple files, that's all worked. We also uh, do an inventory of what's on the backup and match it. And, you know, there's lots of layers of things that you can do, but that means you're actually thinking about being Mm -hmm. able to restore. Yeah. Or how, you know, are they connected? Is Mm -hmm. the backups connected to the network? Are they at any point disconnected? Are they hosted somewhere else in the cloud? Which, Mm -hmm. you know, that's not 100% protection either. I mean, there's all these different ways you can do stuff and you need to take them all. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you've got to have redundancy and protections, but certainly not knowing if your backups are even going to work and just trusting. I mean, you know how many times I've seen people say we have backups and I go look at them like, they hadn't ran in months. Yeah. I know you're paying for backup, but it's not working. Or your backup's running once a week and, uh, yeah. you know, at best. But yeah. if it, this is a thing that we have known for a long time, though, that they are encrypting online backups. You know, your if your backup is connected, it is being encrypted, period. Because that's one of the things they immediately start looking for. So we're not sure exactly what happened, but. Uh, we don't know whether they paid and then couldn't decrypt. We, we don't know, but what their announcement is, is... Maybe they called a negotiator. <laughs> Maybe they <laughs> are where we learned about this. I don't know. But the bottom line is, according to them, all their data is corrupted. Like, they have brought in multiple recovery services, forensics folks, trying to get their data back. And they cannot. So basically what they're having to say to their patients, and this is family medicine. We're not talking big hospital or their letter says, upon discovering the extent of the damage, we engaged additional forensics and recovery services as part of our exhaustive efforts to do everything we could to try and recover the data. Unfortunately, these efforts to date have been unsuccessful. And patient electronic records before May 21st, 2021 are unrecoverable. And they've been around for 20 20 years. years. Yeah, the opening paragraph of the letter says, As you may be aware, our IT system has been down for several weeks. Several weeks. (laughs) Yeah. Before they get to the point where they give it. We value our relationship with you and serving as a trusted healthcare provider to our community over the past 20 years. 
We are writing to you today to share the most updated information on this incident, our efforts to bring our systems back online, and our practices path forward. So at least they're not doing like, okay, we're out of business. <laughs> you know, like some of them yeah. have done. But they've been down for weeks. We know how painful that is. They're having to do these notifications. Again, painful. Because remember, you're supposed to protect the confidentiality, which most people worry about, but also the integrity and availability of your mm -hmm. records. So basically, they're trying to figure out all the different ways that they can try to rebuild patient medical records. 20 years worth. Mm-hmm. You know, so the only good thing is they can say they've purged. And, you know, that that's a huge conversation in healthcare of, you know, I don't want to get rid of records because I never know when I'm going to need to go back and get that, you know. But you know what? If you've got 30 years worth of records that uh, it, it's time, you need to purge. You got to, you're protecting information you shouldn't need to protect. Mm-hmm. So you want to get rid of anything that you don't need to be protecting. That's just one more thing for you to worry about. Yeah, you know, th this is one of those times where, you know, you, you wish somebody would have said, let's take a maybe maybe quarterly or monthly or whatever, but let's take and do a, a backup of our data systems and, and physically store it somewhere like in a safe. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not connected. Yes, we will lose a month's worth of work. Or, or a quarter's worth of work, maybe even a year's worth of work, but we yeah. won't lose everything. Yeah, you know, and and again, it's it's time consuming because we're talking having a person do things, and, and you know, here in IT, we've gone a long ways to make sure we've automated backups. Right, and now we're getting to the point where we've got to draw back a little bit and say, okay, we, yes, we automate all the backups, but there there is still a manual process i think that we're going to have to bolt back onto it yep there's there's times when a human has to be your last line of defense and uh it, in this case it is uh you know there well i know that it's always been our plan like when you upgrade a server for example that's mm -hmm. a perfect time you get the snapshot of the server, you do the upgrade, and then do a full backup and put that away. Yep. Put that away because that's my worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. And obviously you want to encrypt it and stuff, but <laughs> and know where you put it and not put it, you know, in somebody's Anybody seen that external drive <laughs> yeah, no. with all the data on it. Yeah. It's like the, yeah. the company that took me and showed me their safe. It was in the mm -hmm. floor. And they were near a river. Ooh. So, um, <laughs> yeah. anyway. But, I mean, the, but these are conversations that certainly you should be having with IT, in, internal or external. But, it, you know, as I said, IT folks tend to come in because I would do it initially. I would probably say, yeah, absolutely. We handle your backup. It's all automated. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand as the, as the business, you know, what business risks are you willing to take? And do you want to pay, whether it's the IT company or somebody else on staff, to help the process? But you're going to have to physically have somebody that's putting a hardware device online to back up to periodically and then take it offline and store it somewhere else. Either IT needs to come out and do it or you have to have somebody else do it. But it's, going to, it's an additional piece of work. And storing um, it somewhere else is a key element. <laughs> yes. You know, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, we talk about convenience all the time. Security is not convenient. So protecting yourself is not convenient. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. that's the way you avoid disasters like that because this is terrible. Yeah. It's, I mean, you, it, it, and a lot of times, you know, it, it's easy to forget that this practice is the victim a lot of times it's it's easy to forget that they are the victims of a criminal attack. Mm -hmm. Yes. But their patients are the ones that are suffering a big part of the consequences 
of them being a victim. And now, imagine, uh, imagine if this, if, and I don't know that there aren't, but imagine if this was like records of X rays. You know how much radiation somebody's getting. You know you can only get so much over your lifetime. Mm-hmm. So if you lose track of how much radiation that a patient's been given, what do you do? I mean, there there are so many things. I've fallen down and hurt myself so many times. I feel certain I've probably exceeded that, and I kind of glow a little <laughs> bit in the dark. You glow in the dark. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's that complete loss. So we started this episode talking about the ability to get access to your records in a complete and timely manner. This is, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, Not only do the patients want it, but you want it yeah. <laughs> as a provider. <laughs> so I do want I do want to kind of wrap this up by asking, you know, going back to the beginning of saying, look, you know this activity's out there, and I would mm-hmm. love to know if you could have gone in to this practice that, you know, is, is suffering right now and two months ago and said, do you think you're susceptible to a ransomware attack? Do you think you can restore from backup if you're hit with an attack? And how long do you think you'd be down if you were hit with an attack before you're back up and running? What do you think the yeah. answers would be if we had asked them two, even a month ago? I mean, in in my experience, people have the "it won't happen to me" syndrome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they would have said, "You know, ransomware attacks happen, but not to that." You know, we're, we're not worrying about it. We're small. <laughs> Our IT has it. IT yeah. has it. We we have backups, so we're good. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm sure we can be back up and running same day. <laughs> yeah. Well, we now I mean, know that, the answer to two of those. Because we know they're not back to normal, and they don't know when they'll be back to normal. There will never be a back to normal. Mm -mm. No, never. I mean, think about just, we talk about the overall, the soft cost, the reputational damage, and, and, and then the resources that will be diverted from their ability to move forward and grow. Their resources are now diverted to putting them back together. You know, the Humpty Dumpty fell off a wall and now we've got, you know, all the king's horses and all the king's men and pretty much everybody in the whole community is going to have to participate in some way, both in the medical community and if patients have their records, take them. If you had recently gotten a copy of your records from us, please bring them back. You know, that kind of stuff. So... It's that if if I ask you those questions today and you feel confident that you have it covered after hearing this story. Can you prove it? <laughs> <laughs> it uh, you, I'm just saying you should not feel confident you have it covered. If you yeah. do, you're in trouble. Yeah. Overconfidence because, will, will get you. Yeah. I mean, we can tell you, and we'll tell you more stories in, in, as we go. The next few weeks, we got some great stuff coming out for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And we're going to tell you some great stories of how, yes, we're confident, but we're terrified at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. We're well, gonna, it's the whole, tr- you know, trust but verify. I'm confident, but I verify. Yeah. Like, I'm confident in, in the backups that we put in place for clients. But yeah. I also... <laughs> I also verify that they work every uh, regularly. single day. Yes. Yeah. Every constantly. single day when you're testing yeah. those things. And I'm constantly trying to figure out, is there a hole somewhere? Is there something we forgot? Is there something that's changed? Because you've just got to have somebody in your business doing that for you. And, you know, if your IT provider tells you, you're good, I got you. Er, I understand that that's a promotional statement. However, <laughs> I need you to give me a little bit more of how you got it. Let's understand. Yeah. Are you paranoid? Because that's where we all need to be. So if you feel mm-hmm. comfortable and you have it under control, I'm sure that that practice <laughs> could tell you they were comfortable. They had it under control. They probably even said it when it happened, maybe. 
but how long after they they learn of the attack do you think it was before that was the oh moment? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, sugar honey iced tea moment. Yeah. It wasn't long. It wasn't long before that confidence was gone. Yep. It's a bad place to be. Yeah, and I, f- I feel for these people. I I would not in a million years wish this on anybody because it's bad for them. It's bad for their staff. The stress it puts on everybody involved with the practice, their vendors, everybody, and the patients. So know that they're back. Know your enemy and yourself because it's going to leave a mark. Mm-hmm. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Boom. There you go, brother. If you, if you have to pick one of the two, know yourself. We can't get yeah. past that yet. No. <laughs> People don't know themselves well enough. <laughs> yeah, well, the, you know, the, the I'm confident means you don't know yourself. You know, yeah, I think no, you I, I a... can be confident, but I should also be cautious. You should have a, a healthy level of fear. Yes. You know, it, it reminds me of the days I used to be a competitive martial arts tournament fighter. Yeah, and no, you keep throwing out these little nuggets to people, and they're like, he did what? Yeah, yeah. so I was um, a multi-state champion for a while, and every single time I got in the ring, I was knee-knocking nervous. Yeah. It was, and it got worse the higher you got in the rankings because you had more to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. every time, no matter how many times, I was always just so freaking nervous. Confident, yes. I was really confident that I was probably going to walk away with all my teeth. <laughs> 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 and, and the other guy would would get the raw end of the stick. But I was nervous every time. Every single time I was nervous. And well, it's kind of the same yeah. way here. You know, no matter how confident you are that your skills of IT and ninja – skills and IT are going to get get you by, you still should be nervous because you just never know when the, the other person is going to have a little bit more skills than you are. <laughs> well, and, you know, knowing, you know, like here's a perfect example of counting on your vendors the right way is I know if we go out somewhere and I tie one on a little bit and I start mouthing off a little too much, I got you. <laughs> I know that you're going to be able to handle pretty much anything that could happen in a very scary situation. But on the flip Mm -hmm. side of that, I also know that I might need to step in before you put your foot through somebody's face. (laughs) So so I feel very confident you got my back. And I feel very confident that you are assessing the scenario at all times. But I also have to take on some of that responsibility myself. She's still looking for the door to run out. <laughs> I know. I got to know. I got to know certain things when I come in. I got to know all my exits and uh, baños de damas. <laughs> it's very important to know where the restroom is. That's all I can say. But either way, you know, it, it's about constantly being aware of your environment and having a plan. Even if mm-hmm. your plan is, I'm going to say, hey, David, you see this? <laughs> <laughs> I have to have a certain level of confidence in you. Or as one of your team members said, my instant response plan is to call Donna and my plan is in action. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> what are you going to do with this? Call you. Activated the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right. All right, folks, remember to follow us and share it out on your favorite social media. Help us to grow the podcast. Leave us a rating and review. Help us spread the word. We love it. We love it. (laughs) So I'm going to change up here for a second. Maybe for good. Who knows? But just remember, for Don and myself, privacy and security is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. 
consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.